Hello all, I know it's been a while. I've been uh, pretty busy here lately at the shop and I try to do these videos in little pockets of time, but I don't want to waste any more of your time. Uh, but uh, So today we'll be talking about uh, feeding the printer. So if you're using a P800 or L1800 or whatever, for the most part the way you feed these printers are, are going to be pretty similar, I would say. Uh, so we first need to talk about actually what's happening. So I've already sent a job over to the L1800 uh, here, and I have to kind of explain first what the possible culprits could be, and then I'll actually show you what the most common method I found with probably, and I'm just being modest with saying a 98% feed rate on the sheets, because it could be an issue with the manufacturer or uh, the, the actual, how the sheets are cut, uh, you could be getting a genuine skew error, which is when, let's say, the paper is supposed to be cut square. It's off skew, and so the printer does that. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so first and foremost, um, let, or actually, uh, someone asked me about this tray. Uh, so there's a video I have to find it but all this is is a um, I'm sorry I just had to do this it's gonna be difficult for me to uh, do a short video like that but it's the core plast signage and then we covered it with vinyl but that'll probably be my next video to show you guys how I created this or cut out this tray uh, but okay so let's get into it so let me make sure this is okay perfect so um, first we need to talk about what's happening so here and I'll zoom in pretty pretty soon but here at least on the L1800 there's a rubber wheel uh, like I said don't do what I do I powder a little bit too close to this so the first time I experienced the feed errors it was because the powder uh, particles had I guess floated over to this rubber wheel and it was preventing it from actually grabbing actually it's a motion like that uh, but from grabbing the paper and pulling it down and so here I'll, I'll show you what this looks like in a second but firstly this is the most common thing that I've seen and this is where people assume that uh, and it's 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 nothing bad but I'll just try to be uh, pretty liberal with this so there are a lot of sheets here now it hasn't tried to accept the sheets but I'm pretty sure it won't but I'm just putting this in here like most people would and we'll just see the printer should be ready to that is crazy okay well it did accept it that print's gonna probably be ruined but Okay, so I just have good sheets apparently. So, <laughs> Kingdom DTF everybody, I put an entire stack of sheets there and it still accepted it. So we'll just see if the print's terrible, that's okay. Uh, so I'll have to try to force this error, which is kind of funny because I used to have a lot of feeding errors and if I can find some old footage, I'll let you see how it started out. Uh, but after this print, I'll go ahead and try to force that error to show you why you should only load one sheet too. And while we're doing this, let's uh let's actually talk about what why I only feed one sheet. So I can you do use this as a teachable moment. So I only feed I only load one sheet for uh for the sole purpose of le at least with the L1800. I can't speak for any other printer model, but for DTF, the inks obviously are wet when they when they exit the printer so there's no point in me loading multiple sheets because once this first sheet prints out let's say I preload another job and it tries to accept that but I'm not here to pull this print off it's it's gonna the new sheet is gonna run into the old sheet and smear it so that happened to me twice and I figured it would never happen again because the printer prints so slow and still that's 10 minutes per print not too bad uh, but uh, it prints so slowly that 
I have plenty of time to come and get the print. Now, if you would like to, what we could do is we could go into Acro Rip or whatever your Rip software is, and let's say once I sent this job, let's say this job is printing right now. If I wanted to print another sheet in succession, what I would do is go and queue another job, uh, and then, but I'm only loading one sheet. So let's say this job finishes, it's going to queue it up. It's going to try to feed the sheet, but again, it won't have anything. So it'll generate that error because there isn't another sheet to, to feed. But the beauty in that is that I don't have to wait extra time for that next print to go to, or to, for that data to be parsed and sent to the printer. So if, if you don't understand that, all I'm saying is that, uh, let's say I'm running one job right now. I, I'm printing this one. I would go over to AcroRip, or whatever my RIP software is, and I would just go and queue another print, but I've only loaded one sheet. So because I've only loaded one sheet to the printer, this one will be done and then it'll try to accept it and all i need to do is when it generates that error all i would do with the l1800 is to load another sheet into the printer and then hold you know for about two or three seconds the page feed button and that'll start the next print but be careful with this because at least for the l1800 uh there is no feature to actually clean the print head in between prints so you may notice that some of your whites will become faded or you might get a little bit of banding after about four or five prints so just be mindful of that and know that every three or four prints just run a really light cleaning a head cleaning uh and you know that's just press press and hold this button here i've been swinging this thing around uh but you know you'll just hold the ink charge or the, not ink charge but the uh the head cleaning button uh so we printed our purge sheet. This, guys, this is my first print of the day. So I already did a video on that. There's no fading with the whites. I've already withdrawn the particulates out of my white nozzles because it's been three days since I printed, uh, with this printer at least. And so uh, I think some of our image might be cut off a little bit on this side, just looking at where this falls. But uh, this is all here. So what we'll do is I'll I'll speed this up and then we'll go back and I'll try to force that error so that I can actually do what we intended to do in this video uh, but yeah if you have good films I guess it doesn't really matter how many you load uh, but uh, shout out to Kingdom DTF for me being able to load I mean I tried to load 15 sheets or so to force that error and it's still fed it but I don't need a whole stack the paper so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and reposition this try to generate the error and then show you the rubber roller that you might want to clean with an alcohol swab or uh, or if you don't have the the little prep pads you can dip one of the foam swabs you don't have to use these they are in the link in the description but um, dip it in some alcohol and you'll rub that roller clean all right bear with me Okay, I hope you guys can hear me okay. So, this is actually what's happening. So, uh, if you think of a normal A3 size sheet of paper versus a piece of film, there's something in the printer world we call GSM. And so basically in short, in short, that's just how thick the paper is. So, a normal size A3 sheet of paper would normally lay flat it's always going to do that whether you have a stack of paper or regular paper it's going to lay flat but the film uh, is heavier it's a heavier GSM or a heavier weight and so for those of you uh, you guys who may be bored right now you have to remember that this is an information based craft so I hope I don't bore you with this you have to know why it's doing that so this film has a tendency to want to buckle like that we need to get this to lie as flat as possible. So you want to put the sheet in, load one sheet, and press down against the plate and back. That way, so you're pressing down and back. And you're also 
looking at this guide to make sure that it doesn't that it's not you know causing it to buckle but it's not too loose either and you want to keep this flat if it has a tendency to push forward um, put it near a wall or it may be too close to a wall and you may need to come back but uh, keep that consistency so I'm gonna remove this before it finishes parsing the file so that you can see that error code generate so that no one can say that I wasn't really having these errors before or that it wouldn't trigger that and so this is the rubber roller I mentioned before so you want to get some alcohol and a foam swab and alcohol uh, you know some alcohol and a foam swab and you just want to lightly you know brush against that because you may have some dust or debris there that may be causing that error it may be an actual skew error as I mentioned before where the edge of your film isn't perfectly uh, square so you may want to load that sheet actually you can turn that sheet around and load it that way because the the off skew cut may be on the opposite side of the film so these are these are just things you have to uh, think about or you, know, you don't have to but things you should think about in terms of getting a 100 percent feed rate uh, on the printer so it's going to try to load it but again only load it one sheet so it's going to fail, I know that. So you see the red lights. It's very hard for me to record this. Hope you guys can bear with me. So this is these are the lights you should be getting. This is how it should look. And so you want to address the easiest fix first. Like we don't want to tamper with the printer at all unless you have to. So if these methods don't work, then try the rubber roller. And then what you could do if you wanted to, uh, man, I wish I would have done that before I moved this. Okay, so let's let's go back here. You could get a prep pad, like an alcohol prep pad. You could get an alcohol prep pad, and you can hold that uh, the page uh, where the page error uh, loading error light is and you have to be very careful but let's say I were going to press that uh, you can you can actually wipe that as that roller you saw that I'm gonna do it one more time so you could dip it in the alcohol and al al alcohol is gonna evaporate so you don't have to worry about it damaging anything and we're just gonna lightly brush against that as that as that rotates and that's so you can clean the, the full roller okay so back to what I was mentioning before let's go back to loading the sheet Okay, so if you have this error, again, assuming that you have good quality sheets from uh, whoever you're, it doesn't have to be Kingdom DTF, I just wanted to shout them out uh, because I was surprised that it fed fit, like 15 sheets. So, um, again, uh, oh, another, okay, so let's try this. This has also helped me as well. So you're going to press, I don't want to scratch the film, so you're going to press down, down, and then you want to press back make you know make sure this rests flat just as I showed you that a, a, sheet, a normal sheet of paper would do and then you want to make sure this isn't too tight or too loose now let's assume that I got an error which I know I want because I have good sheets so what I'm going to do is press here as I so I'm pressing firmly and I'm going to put a little down force on this while I'm pressing this 
and that sometimes helped me load the four by six sheets and it's good now also you'll see this guide come out a little bit now you might want to snug it up just a little bit there's no harm in doing that and that will make sure it perfectly feeds straight you shouldn't have to do that but i've i've had to do that with other printers that where the it was off skew a little bit so uh quick just a quick uh deal i won't do it here but with this with these tanks this has nothing to do with paper feeding but when people talk about shaking their tanks every day it's not a shake it's a seesaw motion so when you take this out you're gonna do it's it's more of that motion when you shake the ink tanks what you will find is that oftentimes when you shake the tanks you might uh, develop air bubbles inside the tank which would then uh, ultimately mess with the ink flow that you have within your actual lines and you don't want air in those lines so that was just a side note here the Epson 7890 is coming along it's been two and a half months I might throw in a little snippet of my my maniacal laugh just so just bear with me man this has been a journey but this is the entirety of this channel to show that you can use the L1800 to produce quality prints uh, you can definitely earn a living uh, with DTF if it's too slow you know mate you can run enough prints sell enough shirts buy two printers or you can go the route that I did and kind of invest in something like this uh, but we are just here to produce quality prints and I'm here to help send me if, if this if this video helped you, please thumb it up. Uh, please share it with some with another garment decorator that you know. If it didn't help you, I would hope you wouldn't uh, thumbs down, but I don't care, honestly. I just wanted to get this out here. Uh, but I would say to ask me any questions, I may be able to help you outside of this YouTube video. Uh, so if you need any support in terms of DTF printing or you have any questions, let me know and we'll get them answered. I may not know the answer, but I'll find it. Uh, so, thanks again for watching the content. Stay elegant. I need to take that automatic cleaning feature off of there too. It seems like it wastes a ton of ink. I haven't even really done the job and I'm at half capacity with my cartridges. Just a word to the wise. I don't know if that'll help you. Okay, I probably need to shake the ink tanks. It's pooling. Oh, usually it would start. Ooh. I still hear the vacuum, but oh, it's not, it's not striking. It's not striking. Okay, I gotta reach out to Victor. <laughs> <laughs> no there it is so man i can't believe it didn't strike again like uh i don't well i don't know i'd set it to the heavyweight polyester but uh i think the head cleaning the head was a good measure but i've i've cleaned it seven or eight times man my throat hurts man i haven't done that in probably three four years uh but yeah it was worth it so uh yeah I've, yeah i've got gained a second win so i'm pretty excited i mean just the it's not perfect but the fact that it isn't it didn't strike let me try to um pull a uh, pull an indiana jones uh cut okay man that's i mean it's not perfect it's uh I definitely need to shake that those the inks. Uh, but what's about the front? Okay, yeah, it got a little banding, but the fact that it didn't strike, I can fix all of these other issues. I've got cleaning carts and the whole nine, so I'm not really concerned with the the slight banding. It's set up just for a little while, but I can clean the printer. But yeah, man, this is a uh, great. So these are issues that we can solve. Uh, 
probably you probably can't see me and I'm right handed so that's backwards but um yeah this is this is okay this is great man like we're not quite ready but I can still upload this video because yeah man it's been two and a half months and coming so uh, stay elegant mm -hmm.